There are a few other things that can bias our survey results. One of those is what's called non-response bias. That's an R. And so what that is, is that when we contact people to survey them, even if it's a genuinely random sample, not everyone is going to respond. It just is a matter of life. Not everyone responds. Even the census can't get 100% of people, uh, although they get pretty darn close. If the people who don't respond are different than the ones who do, our results may be biased. So let's write that down. So for example, if I call a bunch of houses at 6 o'clock p.m. and I ask to speak to the head of the household and I want to know how many hours they work, um, obviously I'm going to call and sometimes when I call the head of the household just isn't there and so you know maybe I call back the next day or whatever but I keep calling back at 6 o'clock. Well, who am I going to miss? The people who aren't going to respond are the ones who aren't there, probably because they're still working at 6. And they might work a different number of hours than the people who are there at 6 p.m. So that's where non-response bias would come into play. Maybe I'm going to get the people who respond working fewer hours than the people who don't respond, and so my sample would be biased. Now, if the people who aren't there are actually the same, basically, as the people who are there, um, then it wouldn't matter. There wouldn't be non-response bias, even though some people didn't respond. It's specifically the people who don't respond have some difference. And this can also happen, for example, if people um, are living mainly in uh, a state that favors one political party and are asked about their party preferences, the people who are in the minority may be less comfortable responding, may be less likely to do so. Um, there are ways to minimize this. And one is to try to contact people repeatedly. And the other is trying to contact people using different ways. So maybe if I'm trying to call um, a particular set of parents at Wilson Prep and I can't get hold of people, maybe I would call at a different time or call on the weekend. Or maybe I'd send a note home with a kid or something like that. But I would be persistent in trying to get their response. 
Another source of bias is called the social desirability effect. And the social desirability effect is that people are reluctant to give socially unacceptable answers, especially if their responses are not confidential. For example, if I were to ask people if they have cheated on a quiz in my class, please raise your hand, um, I'm not likely to get all that many accurate responses, um, whereas I'd be much more accurate responses if it was like an anonymous survey or something like that. Um, same kind of thing, this is particularly has an impact when asking people about something related to sex, which there's a lot of um, social um, taboos about, um, that asking people that sort of information publicly or in a way where it might get to their parents or things like that, um, people are reluctant to give honest responses. They might respond, but it might not be honest. Um, another way of putting this, people may lie. So to give that first example, If I ask students to raise their hands if they cheated in my class, I probably won't get honest answers. And in terms of how to minimize that, the main one is to keep answers confidential. Although that obviously will only work if the person taking the survey actually believes their answers will be confidential.